Irina Pilipchuk, you are Director of Research and Market Information and INREV. Thank you for joining us on BTV. Good afternoon. Uh, the INREV Quarterly Fund Index uh, once again revealed that Q1 2023 sorry, was the third consecutive quarter of negative fund level performance for European real estate. Uh, how can we explain this negative performance? Well, I think uh, th there's a lot of components at play, right? So, of course, uh, towards the second half of last year, uh, the first uh, period of correction has started. We had a very uh, strong negative performance in Q4. And I think it just is still early in terms of pricing discovery. And whilst there has been uh, some improvement in terms of performance compared to Q4, the latest results are still in the negative. And also, of course, because of the valuation and seasonal effects, a Q1 is not a very famous quarter in terms of being indicative of direction of travel. So it's also quite difficult to implement to what extent uh, the correction has already taken place and, and how much is yet uh, to come. Mm. Uh, not every sector uh, is affected uh, the same way by macroeconomic turmoil. Uh, maybe uh, the question is, therefore, which asset classes and also geographies uh, appear to be the most resilient in, the, in this current macroeconomic environment? Uh, again, I think it's very complex uh, discussion because... Uh, there is component of fundamentals. So, you know, the strengths of the occupier markets, uh, the position in terms of affordability of tenants, but also the long-term structural change uh, that has been undergoing in our um, sector for a long time now, puts different segments of the market in terms of sectors in a different positions. And, and for that very reason, sometimes penalizes them too, because if you think about it, you know, the correction that we have seen, particularly towards the second half of last year, was very much driven by uh, pricing adjustment to reflect the high interest rates and the strengths and the rapid increase that we have seen there. And some of the stronger sectors in terms of underlying fundamentals, such as industrial and logistics, were actually affected the most in the negative way because the, that's where the pricing was uh, the steepest in terms of uh, capital value per square meter, plus the expectations of rental growth. So whilst the fundamentals are still there, and very strong, the mega trends underpinning the sector are still very much present. The correction is driven by effectively high level repricing across the board, mm -hmm. and that penalizes uh, the sector. Uh, but if you step away from kind of temporal correction driven by the capital markets uh, per se and focus on you know uncertainty or a discovery i think the office sector looks uh, least um confident in terms of the outlook um we see a lot of biofication in the market where the kind of better quality well located esg uh, efficient office space is doing very, very well, and in fact, continues to get um, um, good, strong tenant, including the rental growth expectations, whilst the more tertiary or secondary assets or those that need a lot of uh, capital expenditure to move it towards better, greener space, Mm. are really suffering and you would have seen that from the data when we look at the dispersion and performance particularly for the office sector um, from the investor sentiment perspective which tends to be a little bit more you know forward looking so to speak so it's not looking at um, what's going to happen in the next uh, one quarter but maybe a couple of quarters this is the only segment where the net sentiment is still clearly negative across the board 
It's interesting also to note that despite the difficult market conditions, INRED's June 2023 consensus indicator survey revealed that confidence as well as investment plans are returning into positive territory. Do you expect Europe's real estate markets to recover over the coming quarters, given this, let's say, optimistic view, this optimistic sentiment? Yeah, I, I think it needs to be put in a context. Um, so there are probably few caveats to that. When we talk about return of confidence, uh, where we see a return uh, in terms of investment plans for European real estate is turned positive since March, but it's not a reflection of immediate going back to the market and increase in allocation. It's perhaps more of a confirmation that market participants are seeing markets correct, pricing being readjusted. Uh, for many segments of the market, the underlying supply and demand conditions are healthy. So this is probably just having a confirmation that finally the asset class is readjusting, being repriced and sits more comfortably in the multi-asset portfolio, albeit I would argue that there is probably still uh, some time before full uh, correction is uh, understood or visible to what extent it will continue. Uh, as I've mentioned earlier, because it's a Q1 result, it's it tends to be that lull in the market. You have a seasonal effect. You have in quite lots of markets, such as France, where the valuations are down twice a year. Uh, normally in the second, uh, first uh, June and uh, December period. So of course you will have that pause. And whilst we see more positive news in terms of degree of adjustment and in some segments, even a positive performance for the UK, again, I think because the transactional markets have been so quiet, in fact, we had one of the record lowest quarters for the last 10 years in terms of transactional activity. Um, the price and discovery is still ongoing. We still have questions about what does inflation outlook looks like? What does the interest rate pass looks like? And uh, on that basis, uh, you know, predicting when uh, the markets will bottom out and uh, to what extent we are to expect recovery in the any kind of short term, it's uh, premature. Okay. All right, uh, that's duly noted. Uh, in the meantime, uh, thank you very much for this insight. Uh, thank you for your time. And also thank you uh, all for joining us and we'll see you soon on BETV. Most welcome, thank you.